and then finally, good students take responsibility for their own learning. They don't expect the teacher to, to give them everything. Um, that you're proactive and asking questions and understanding what your goals are, understanding what's going to be on the exams, uh, and organizing your own study time. Are there any other things that you guys do? I wanted to have ten things on the list. There are only nine. I felt kind of uncomfortable about that. So I put like your ideas here, so there'd be ten. <laughs> are there other things you do to be a good student? What do you do? Uh huh. So you try to always think in the target language rather than going back and forth uh, between that language and English. That's a good one. Good. Are there other things that you do that uh, you can think of to be a good student? Maybe not just in your foreign language class, but more generally, that you found really helps. Uh huh. Go back to all notes that you've taken in the class. Okay, yeah, that's a really good one. Like, not just to forget what you did and keep like going, going, going forward, but to constantly go back. That could have been number 10. That should have been number 10 there, to go back and review and review. And to do that on your own, because your teacher most likely isn't going to say, isn't going to have you do that. You're sort of moving forward. Um, but especially in language courses where everything is cumulative, and on the final exam, there'll be material that you learned in the first week of the class, and you may be using it, but maybe not so much. And so it's really incumbent on you to keep going back. And uh, um, that's a really good idea. I'm going to put that for number 10. So a trick then with this whole strategies business is to match specific things that you can do to a specific task. I'm going to give you some handouts to have a bunch of, uh, uh, of really specific ideas, but I wanted to give you an example here. So if your goal is, or the task is, you're in a conversation, and what you want to do is, uh, is understand the basic meaning of what the person is saying, acknowledging that you're not going to understand every word. Because right? when you're learning a language, you can't understand every word. If you, if you think that you're going to, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because part of learning means knowing a part of something uh, and being able to do a part of something. And so if you're speaking with a native speaker, um, a lot of what that person says may not be what you learned have learned already, specifically. Uh, so think specific things that you can do. You can focus on where word and sentential stresses and how the person uses intonation and pauses to try to listen for key words. So just now I said, listen for key words. The key words were key words. <laughs> uh, and if you listen, okay, so you're talking to someone, and you can't like have your dictionary right here, and be like, okay, you know, pause, <laughs> look it up. So you have to uh, uh, learn to attend to what's important. Be comfortable with not understanding every word, but try to listen for what you think is important. Stress and intonation can tell you uh, tell you a lot. You can try to make educated guesses about the meaning, about what the person is trying to say based on the general topic, based on who's speaking, based on the person's body language and the tone. You can actually tell a lot, even if you don't understand, maybe you understand just like two or three words, you can understand a lot of what someone's saying. Um, like you can get a few key words, you're paying attention to their body language, and you know, are they smiling, or are they uh, mad, what's the situation? Uh, you can get a lot from that, and you should feel good about that. You shouldn't feel bad telling what to do. If you don't understand every word, understanding something is a huge achievement. Make predictions about what the person might say. If you're in a conversation, uh, and here's something that you can um, start to practice on your own. In the language you're studying, learn to ask questions in the language. In language courses, students typically answer questions. Right, the instructor asks, and you answer. In a conversation with someone, however, you want to be able to ask questions yourself. You want to be able to say, uh, what did you mean by that? Or, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get what you meant, what you said right then. Uh, so if you can, for yourself, 
write down, okay, here's in, in an Italian, here's how I'm going to ask these kinds, the kinds of questions that I think I might um, uh, want to be able to ask. And then you should have ready um, in the language to ask the questions. You might not understand the answer, <laughs> but, uh, but you're ready with an arsenal of questions. You can ask the speaker to repeat himself, to slow down. So there's specific things that you can do that you probably already do in English. If I'm speaking right now, I'm speaking really fast, and you can't understand what I'm saying because I'm not articulating while I'm speaking really fast, you, you, you would probably say, can you slow down? Right. You can do that in the foreign language as well. Uh, a couple of things to avoid in conversation. There are strategies called cover strategies. These are things you do when you don't understand. Uh, uh, so here's a cover strategy. La 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 da da. I have no idea. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> smile and nod. Smile and nod. So like that. It's okay for you know that gets you some somewhere. Uh, you don't always have to go like uh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't understand. But try to avoid faking it too much. Uh, uh, try to learn to ask questions when you don't understand. Uh, and again, try to avoid getting frustrated when you don't understand every word, because you won't. You can't. That's part of learning a language. You don't know every word in English. Right? But if I just started today and said metacognitive strategies, cognitive strategies, and you're, you all speak English really well, you don't understand every word. So in the foreign language, you're not going to understand every word either, no matter how long you've been studying it. And that is okay. Uh, so I have a bunch of uh, uh, things for you um, to take home and to review. This yellow sheet is um, a learning style survey that will, as I uh, mentioned before, it's a bunch of statements for you to read and to, uh, to if they will help you understand what kind of learner you are. Then, this orange uh, packet is uh, called Language Strategy Use Survey. That sounds really uh, um, important, doesn't it? There are a bunch of uh, uh, strategies that you can try, specific things that you can do in a number of different areas. So if what you want to do is practice listening, uh, what are things, specific things that you can do to improve you're listening in a number of different areas. And it's broken down by vocabulary, speaking, reading strategies, uh, etc. Uh, and then this pink handout has a couple of pages uh, with some other um, strategy ideas that are related. Uh, there's some metacognitive, some affective, and then a bunch of specifically cognitive strategies, um, also related to listening, reading, but also vocabulary. How do you learn new vocabulary? And there are a bunch of different ideas for things that you can try here. So remember that good language learners uh, try lots of different things. They explore uh, strategies that uh, are uh, mesh with their particular learning style, but then they also try out new strategies. Um, and they're always, they try to stay aware of what's working and what, the, what isn't working. Uh, a couple of other things for you to, uh, to look at uh, if you're interested and to pick up if you're, uh, if you're really interested. There's one publication called How to Become or How to Be a More Successful Language Learner. It's a little old, but it has a lot of good ideas in it. Uh, and a publication called, it's called Maximizing Study Abroad. So for those of you who are planning to go abroad, this is a really great publication. But it also has uh, sections on uh, language learning strategies that apply learning in a classroom situation uh, in country as well. And this publication is where I took these two uh, learning style and learning strategy surveys from.